Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Bros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to change the hybrid drive battery for a Toyota Prius V from 2012. So this is actually the drive battery. This is what is powering the electric motor, what is putting you down the road. This is not the low voltage battery. I already did a video on that, and the link is down below in the description. So a lot of people end up with the trouble code P0A80. Now, that trouble code basically means you are going to need a new hybrid drive battery and they're around 2200 bucks that neighborhood something like that they're kind of pricey but i'm going to show you how to save some money by changing it yourself and it's really not that difficult the hardest part is lifting the battery in and out of the car because it's about 120 pounds or so so it's a little weighty and you don't want to hurt yourself this is definitely something someone could do in their garage or driveway in about an hour to two hours it's really not that bad when I first accepted this job, I'd never done one before, I kind of thought it'd be about as much work as a transmission, something around those lines, and it's really not. It's about the same amount of effort as putting in uh, like a rear seat or taking one out or, or something around those lines. It's just kind of bulky, but there's truthfully only about six volts to hold the battery together. It is definitely something you can accomplish and handle yourself. Just call the dealer and ask them for a battery. I would definitely recommend getting one from Toyota OEM. And here's why, when they're rebuilt from Toyota, the, all the cells have been replaced it has been certified by toyota for a toyota i definitely recommend that i can't guarantee all aftermarket battery manufacturers aren't just replacing one cell and then that one cell is new and the other ones are old so they're going to charge and decay differently and they're never going to be in sync and it'll just go out in fact this exact prius already had its battery replaced with an aftermarket battery that's not as good as the oem and look couple thousand miles later here we are you tried to save 500 bucks or so and you end up paying for the toyota oem one anyway so just skip all of that call the toyota parts department give them your vin number tell them you need a hybrid drive battery and they're going to get you one you bring your core charge back to them they give you your 500 bucks back you take your new battery home and everything is good to go so with all that out of the way let's go ahead and jump into this thing get this prius back on the road so we're going to remove the negative battery terminal cable first and those of you with eagle eyes might notice that the cover for the regular 12 volt the low voltage battery like a normal car battery is missing it did not come with the car i don't have it i'm sure it's just something you pull up and get out of there so what we need to do is take a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench and loosen this bolt that holds the negative cable and once it's loose we're going to lift up and off on that and then store it down and in such a way that it can't accidentally touch we don't want that to happen so now we can move the bottom of our trunk here and just get that completely out of the way remove this foam insert before we go any further let's go ahead and make this battery safe and the way that you do that is you just pull on this service plug until it comes completely out once this has been removed the battery is completely safe to handle so we're going to come back here and grab the top of the battery cover and just kind of pull it up like this. It has little uh, tangs right here that you just kind of pull up on and then uh, the whole thing should come off. So it looks like back here behind the rear seats on the passenger side only, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that needs to be removed. And then this whole thing should be able to come out. And we should be able to just remove this battery cover and get it out of there. So let's go ahead and take this intake ducting for our fan here for the battery. Now, this battery has been replaced before. It looks like the technician didn't put the body clip that goes here. Maybe it's a nut bolt assembly, I'm unsure. So yours will probably have that, but mine doesn't. But if yours does, go ahead and remove it and pull it up. And then we can just pull this out. That's no biggie. And then also it looks like there should be another body clip right here that you can just remove. But again, this one doesn't have it. So we'll just slide that out. You probably don't even need them truthfully, but um, I feel like I have to mention that. So next we can unplug all of these plugs and they only go in one way. So don't worry about like labeling them or anything. You don't need to just push on the safety and then pull them apart for all of them. Leave that one that looks like it's gonna stay with the car so it looks like this body clip is here just gonna pry that out of there this wiring harness stays with the car 
What's that? It's got a little safety gold in place right there. That's cool. It does. Okay, so now this wiring harness, this side of the wiring harness, is completely independent of the battery, which is what we want. So the next thing we can do is take a 10 millimeter socket and remove these nuts that hold the uh, shielding on for the main power feed for the car. That's what this big orange wire is. to just remove that sweet so now we can remove the 10 millimeter nuts that actually have the power feed for the car and this is why we disconnected that service plug and uh, disconnected the uh, 12 volt battery so there is no current in the car because this is some serious voltage and it can hurt you it's not like regular car battery where it really can't this can just by even just touching it There we go, and you just lift those off and set those aside. Here's something to note too, there's a bracket here that holds the main power feed for the electric motor, um, and that is also secured by that nut in the housing, but we do need that lifted up and off our battery mount. So, something to note there. So now, in the uh, top two corners, this is on the driver's side, there's another one over by that big orange uh, cable. There are two 11 millimeter bolts we need to remove. And I find that one of these universal sockets works pretty good. You could probably just use a wrench too, or like a, you know, just a regular socket. This isn't, this isn't super hard to get to. There we go. Oh, interesting. I don't know if this is a stock difference, or since the battery's been swapped, they didn't put the bolts back in their right homes, but I'm gonna put them back how I found them. This one was rearward and this one was frontward. I'm sure they just lost this bolt and they found this one in the shop or something. So do that for both sides. Now we can remove the two 11 millimeter bolts on the front of the battery. There we go. With all six millimeter bolts removed, I believe we can remove our battery pack. It weighs about a hundred pounds, so maybe get a neighbor, friend, buddy, somebody who owes you a favor to help you get this thing out of here. Live with your legs. Ugh. Here we go. So here's the unit I just took out of our Prius V, and here's our brand new battery straight from Toyota. This is something like $2,500, so not very cheap, but it's going to get my customer back on the road and he's gonna be happy with it. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with any of the accessories over there, like the fan control module and some of the bracketry. So we basically we need to transfer all this stuff here to here on the new battery, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Before you go any further, it's a good idea to take a picture of that, just so you know how it all looks and how it plugs back in, or you can refer back to this video. So what I'm gonna do first is remove this bracket. This actually needs to be transferred to our new unit. Uh, you could do the fan first if you wanted to, but I'm gonna worry about this bracket, because um, it needs to be out of the way before so we can get the ducting for the fan out. So what you wanna do is take a 10 millimeter socket, preferably a deep well, and unbolt this connector for the service plug. Get that guy out of there, and then you lift up, and it exposes the, this electrical connector just there. You just push on the safety and wiggle that out. And this stays with the old battery, so don't worry about that guy anymore. Then we can remove the 10 millimeter nuts that are holding this bracket in. Looks like there is three of them. that bracket aside we're gonna need that one later and we need to unplug this module from the battery again it's just a uh, safety you depress with your finger and take off that all stays connected that one stays with the battery okay and then we need to grab our body clip puller and remove these electrical connectors that are stuck to the frame of the battery there we go
that. Now that all goes with that. Now for these electrical connectors, it's really easy. Again, you just push on the safety and pull them out like that. That for both of those guys. And it doesn't matter if you keep track because they are different plugs internally, so you can't actually get that wrong. Unclip this plastic clip, set those wires aside, and then right there, way down there, there's another one of those connectors that you need to kind of depress the safety on and wiggle out. There we go. And it too has one of those plastic clips down here. And we can just open and maneuver the wire out like that. There we go. Now the battery should be completely independent of this control board. And we can remove the three 10 millimeter nuts that hold it together. that are holding this module. And we can get this whole control board out. And remove these three 10 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket on. three fasteners that hold this fan on. They're all 10 millimeter it looks like. We can just move that fan, set that aside, and it looks like we need to take this bracket with us too. There we go. And we need to get our body clip puller and pull this body clip out. Out. And we can just remove our ducting. And there you go. All of the battery has been disassembled. Now this one is ready to go back to Toyota so they can hopefully rebuild it and put it in another car. So this is our new one and uh, assembly is the reverse of disassembly, kind of obviously. Get that tape off of there. And then we can just slide in our new ducting and our battery did actually come with new body clips, so I'm going to put those in. Because sometimes they're reusable, but a lot of the times they break. And since I have brand new ones, I'm going to use them. Well, those fit nice. There we go. And we can put our fan back in. Line that up with the bolt holes. Start all of those by hand. So we can get that nut on there. So it's two bolts, one nut. And then just snug on the tightness. You don't need to be uber specific about it. So we can put the mounting bracket for the control module back on. Let's put those, oh, there's a stud right there, line you up for you. That's pretty good. And then it looks like it's uh, three bolts. Grab our control module and put that back, this bit of it at least, back. And those were these two bolts, I believe. Yep. See, I have to do this for memory. You guys get to just watch the video. And then we can put the control board back in its home. down and then I'm gonna put the body clips in their homes like that. So, oh, no, this one. 
like that, there we go. And then don't forget this white plug on the bottom of the service connector. It only goes in one way, but that looks like something you could easily forget and then your car doesn't work and you don't really know why. And then don't forget to plug this black um, connector in. I'm gonna unplug this one so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but this one just goes right here in its home. So you hear that nice click. And then this is just a safety, so it can't come undone. It just goes down in that hole just right there. And then you just take the white connector and put that above like that. And then we're ready for our bracket here that goes across. Oh no. There we go. Feed that in, feed that over, put the service block uh, connector in, make sure it's in the slots it wants to be in, like that. And then you can line it up and put the bracket on its studs. And then we can go ahead and put these bolts back in their homes. One goes here. And there's one under the module I forgot about. There's one right here. A little challenging to see, but I think you get my gist. Make sure you put your service module back in its home. There we go. Take this off. And then what we need to do is plug all three of these guys in. And I'm going to start with the little more challenging one. That's this one. And it goes like this into this silver module here. And it goes into, I'm actually going to take this clip off. I think that'll be easier. There we go. Then we can plug these connectors in. So this one goes over here. And don't worry, you can't get these wrong. So don't worry about like, oh, we're trying to mix them up. You, I just tried it, you can't. You can't get it wrong. So Toyota made that idiot proof, which I appreciate. And this is our cover plate for the whole thing. But you really can't install it until it is in the car. So don't worry about that. I'm gonna put this bracket back on. Uh, honestly, I don't even think you need this bracket. You could probably live without it and it'd be fine. All it does is hold a wiring, piece of the wiring harness. It's not really essential. Now with everything installed, this is ready to go back in the car. We can put our new battery in. Again, do not hurt yourself. If you can't lift this up reliably, get a friend, neighbor, coworker, something like that. Cause uh, it'd be a real bummer to hurt yourself trying to work on your car. So now that I'm in the car, I can actually kind of maneuver the battery over. Again, be careful. What you're aiming for is basically right here. There's one of these on each side. It's kind of the cleat or the foot that holds the battery to the car. Uh, they removed the bolts out of earlier. So just aim for those. You should be good. it up by like the thin sheet metal you want to pick it up by somewhere substantial <laughs> might take some jiggling there it is <laughs> and you know that it's lined up when this bolt hole that I have my finger on lines up Actually, I'm gonna replace these bolts right now just so the thing can't move on me while I'm working. If I have to loosen them later to kind of move the battery around, I will. There we go. I don't have to worry about those. And we can plug in this gaggle of connectors here. And they only go in one direction, one position, so don't worry about them getting mixed up because you can't. For this one, we can just put this back in its harness holder again. That seems optional. I feel like you can just route it down and be fine. So then we can reconnect our power line to the car, making sure that we put this bracket on this stud. And there we go. Those can reconnect nice and easy. Just start those by hand. 
Now these you want to be gentle with. I think the Torx spec is something like 50 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. So very light. You notice how I'm not using my uh, tool of choice, an impact implement. Instead what I'm using is a very stubby ratchet. There you go. And there you go, no tighter than that. Use your best judgment. So you just kind of feed this down. And there's a little slot that this goes into. There we go. And then you can just connect it to the fan like that. It's like really easy. There's nothing like super specific about that. And then I actually forgot the bolt that goes in the service connector port. There we go. And for those of you wondering, I'm trying to put this nut on here. Um, but it's just not going. Looks like the threads are kind of gacked um, from the factory. So we're just going to leave it two out of three about on that. And besides, it'll have another thing holding it down. So I'm not worried. So then we can put our cover back on, making sure everything fits into its slot. Ooh, like that. Nice. If it's not quite fitting, just give it a nice little jiggle and it'll probably sit down for you. So it looks like there's four nuts that hold this on. Nice. So our cover's back on, doesn't jiggle. I like that a lot. We're almost done. And then I'm gonna replace the body clips right here that were missing on mine, so that way this fan ducting doesn't jiggle around and make a bunch of noise. And then we can replace our ducting for the top and this is probably optional but you know what why not do it the way the factory wanted us to and then it looks like this is just held in with a body clip like that nice so now we can replace the bolts on the uh, sides of the car that actually hold the battery to the subframe of the car uh, there's these 11 millimeter bolts uh, we removed from the driver's side when we took it out and i'm going to show you the passenger side putting it back in you can remove the fan duct like I have done here uh, to make it a little easier on yourself. You can totally do it with it in the way, by the way. Um, I just took it out of the way so you, you know, you on camera can see it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten the other bolts. You can't see, they're off camera. Those are those 11 millimeter bolts that we put back on the driver's side and on the trunk side. And then finally we can replace, or uh, tighten rather, the ones on the passenger side. Because if you try tightening one side down all the way, but not the other, you won't be able to get the bolts in all the way around. So what you wanna do is you wanna thread all six bolts in by hand and then tighten them down like I just did. We can put in our rear cover piece. There's a little tang on the driver's side that slots into a hole. right down here and then we have this dark in color 10 millimeter bolt just line that up so the clip matches up awesome then you can just kind of go around and press on this until it kind of thumps back into position if you haven't already go ahead and tighten these 11 millimeter bolts do is since we're done plugging things in we can put our service plug back in it only goes on the one way like that. Let's put that in position you can just push it in until that arm starts to actuate and then help it along and then lock it down like that so it can't accidentally fall out while you're driving that'd be a bummer then we can put our foam little cargo divider back in how that goes and then when you're connecting the negative battery on any car, what you wanna do is just lightly touch the negative to there. So we're gonna touch it and then if there's any sparks or craziness, cause batteries are really dangerous actually, uh, let off and you know, don't go any further. So we can just touch it, little spark, a little spark's okay. That's perfectly fine. That is all good, but if it's like, all kinds of crazy and is really freaking out then take the negative off there might be a draw somewhere something bad's happening and then we can just snug that down again only wrist tight there we go and then we can put our floor back how we usually would yeah there we go looks pretty good and i don't have the tray for to cover the battery it didn't come with the car 
There's nothing I can do about that, but make sure you put yours back. So I'm in the driver's seat, no lights on or anything. Now, I should be able to put my foot on the brake and hear the fuel pump work. It's a good sign. Now, I should be able to push power with my foot on the brake and see where it says ready. Also a good sign, and I, have, I haven't done any computer things. All I've done, there we go, is replace our hybrid battery and our engine just started for the first time in a long time. Let's see if it goes into gear. All right, moves under its own power again. So this thing is all fixed and I didn't even have to connect any kind of computer or anything. That's awesome. So that is how to change the hybrid battery for a Toyota Prius V from 2012. Now, a regular Prius is probably really similar, if not the same. I just can't confirm that because I don't have one in front of me, but if I had to guess, it's either gonna be the same or just super similar. So feel free to use this video as a guide if you have a regular Prius as well. If you found this video helpful or interesting at all, please consider giving it a like or even subscribing. It really helps my channel out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.